Hello and welcome everyone once again. Please donate generously to the channel so I don't freeze to death. Please. Oh, please, will you stop moaning like a fucking old woman? Jesus Christ, son. Excuse me, who the hell are you and how did you even get in here? Who the hell am I? I'm fucking Billy Butcher, son. And I'm here to sort out your bloody Scott Gimple problem. Well, actually, there isn't really a Scott Gimple problem. I mean, I haven't seen the guy for months. So I don't even know where he is. Enough talk, sunshine. Where's your fucking shitter? I'm dying for a piss. Well, there isn't a loo in here, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, fuck it. I guess I'll just have to go on the old floor then, won't I? Here we go, stud. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing, man? You can't just come in here and piss on the floor. What the hell is wrong with you? What's wrong with me? You want to be asking what's fucking wrong with you, sunshine. Look at you sitting up in here thinking you're all fucking self-important. Oh, look at me. I'm a fucking YouTuber thinking you're so fucking special. You make me fucking sick, mate. I've never actually said any of those words about myself, so I don't know where you're getting this from. Well, I've got some news for you, sunshine. You ain't nothing. You're about as fucking clever as a blind guide dog. Right, well, wouldn't a blind guide dog have to be quite clever? Because, I mean, surely to be able to be qualified, as a guide dog, if it were blind, it would need to be fairly intelligent to get to that stage. So your little insult thing doesn't really work. Well, yeah, I didn't really think about it like that. I suppose you are right, but that ain't the fucking point. The point is, if Scott ain't here, then I've wasted my goddamn time. And I do not like having my time wasted, sunshine. So you've got to review the fucking boys, or otherwise, I'm going to do you. Do me? What? Like have sex with me. No, you sick, dirty bastard. Not have sex with you. I like fucking kill you. Do you, son? Come on, you know what that means. Oh, right, okay. Wait a minute, hold the dog and bone. Are you disappointed that I ain't gonna have sex with you? Mate, you have got the wrong end of the stick here, sunshine. Bloody hell. He thinks I'm gonna play with his fucking didgeridoo. I don't mean to be rude, mate, but what's with the accent? You just turned into an Australian then for a bit. Aussie, what are you on about, mate? I'm fucking London born and bred, son. You sounded a bit Aussie then as well. Look, stop talking about me fucking accent and get on and reveal the boys, right? You've got two hours, and if you don't do it, then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to do you, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be slow, and it's going to be rough. All right, now that definitely sounds like you want to have sex with me. Mate, we are not having fucking sex. I mean, like, it's going to be hard and rough like torture. Will you stop thinking about sex, you fucking dirty bastard? Right, anyway, I'm out of here. Get the review done. Well, I suppose he's the boss, whoever he is. I better do it then. Let's talk about the boys. Spoilers and all that stuff. Let's get to it. Quickly before I start this video, once again, sorry for the background noise. That is a fan because, again, I'm filming in what feels like the outside. It basically is. I'm in a garage and it's absolutely freezing. And you're going to have to put up with it in my videos until I get my own place. And no... That doesn't mean I live in this garage, I live in the house, but I just film in the garage because it's quieter than in the house because it's like a madhouse, there's like seven, eight people in my family, it's crazy. But anyway, enough about all that. So, the boys. So yes, I know I am very late to the party with this one, as I usually am with uh, new shows, but I decided to binge through the boys during my week off work at Christmas. I think I got through it in about two or three days, and I have to say, I really enjoyed it. The only major annoyance, well, I suppose it's not really a major annoyance, but the only annoyance that I really had with the boys was Carl Urban's accent, as alluded to in that silly intro, because I had a hard time working out where he was from or what kind of accent he was trying to put on, because it, it sounded like he was going for the, the London Cockney geezer accent, but then sometimes his sort of, I think he's from New Zealand, his, his native accent would come through, and I was like, hang on, where is this guy actually from? Like, at one point I thought he was from... Australia. I know he's from New Zealand, but anyway, I thought he was from around that area. And then I think it was Huey says, oh yeah, I met this guy from London. And I was like, oh, so he, he is from London. So yeah, the accent wasn't great. I mean, it certainly wasn't Dick Van Dyke in Mary Poppins. Oh, blimey, Gab, no, it wasn't that bad. But still, yeah, as an English guy who lives in the southeast of England, I live like an hour from London. It's not a great accent and it could use some work, but as the season goes on, it does get better. Well, either that or I just sort of ignored it and stopped caring. But Carl, yeah, maybe you should come down and see me and I'll teach you how to put on a proper London accent because 
yours was not great, I'm afraid. But anyway, enough about accents and all that nonsense. Let's talk about the good stuff because there is a lot of good stuff to talk about. As you may have picked up on by this video's introduction, The Boys is not your average superhero show. It's got a lot of swearing, a lot of gruesome gore, and the superheroes aren't really heroes, instead they're more sociopathic assholes. Well, most of them are anyway. The Boys is a unique take on the genre, which I could see people who have genuinely no interest in superhero shows or superhero, you know, comics and everything in that genre, I think they would be interested in this and would enjoy watching it. I think it's fair to say that when most people think of their idea of a superhero, they think of someone who is just and good, someone who will go out of their way to save others and protect the planet at all costs. Well, in The Boys we have the Seven, who are the most popular superheroes on the planet, and to be honest, they're more concerned about making money off their advertising rights and their Twitter followers than they are saving the old lady down the street. These aren't the type of heroes like Spider-Man who perhaps react to everyday crime running around the neighbourhood. These superheroes, every move they make is choreographed by a team who provide them the latest intel and everything they do is done in a way so that they can gain as much exposure and as much positive press as they can as possible. Does that even make any sense? I think it does. It's all about appearances and making money in the Seven. Being an actual hero is secondary, well not even secondary, it's way more down the list. However, an exception to this rule is the new superhero Starlight. Now, Starlight is much like us as the viewers. She has this starry-eyed, ha ha ha, funny, a starry-eyed view, an idolised view of what superheroes should be, and she grows up wanting to be part of the Seven, and she gets the chance to do so when she passes an audition when an ex-member of the Seven retires. However, her perfect idea of what the Seven are like is completely shattered on her first day as part of the group when she is sexually assaulted by another member of the group called the Deep who is like a kind of Aquaman piss take. There's also a moment in which she is out in the city in plain clothes and she comes across a woman who is about to be raped and she saves her and she is then chastised for one, not playing up to the cameras enough and two, for not being in a superhero uniform which just goes to show where the company, the Vault Corporation who run the Seven, where their priorities lie. They couldn't care about this woman getting raped they care more about how their heroes look. The, funnily enough, the woman that actually chastises Starlight is the same weird leader lady from Fear the Walking Dead Season 5 whose name I can't even remember because that show was so bad. But yes, once again, in this show she also plays a really annoying person and I think she might just be typecast to play, like, annoying pricks. I don't have anything against the woman personally, but she seems to be getting these roles where she plays complete assholes, and in this show, I don't like her either. As well as following Starlight, we also follow Huey, who is an ordinary guy who works in a dead-end job, who is also a bit of a pushover. Not long into the first episode, his girlfriend is horrifically killed by a hero known as A-Train, who is like this universe's version of the Flash, because this dude completely plows through her at super speed, and it basically sends her into mush and pieces, and I guess that is what would happen if the Flash ran through someone, but of course that's never really going to happen in DC, is it? So yeah, it's pretty grim. And what we're left with is a pretty horrific scene of Huey standing on the sidewalk holding his girlfriend's two hands, which is all that's left of her, covered in blood and screaming, and yeah, it's pretty messed up. And for his troubles, he gets offered a paltry check of $45,000 in compensation because apparently his girlfriend was collateral damage and it happens all the time and apparently all she's worth is 45k. Are you having a laugh? 45k? For killing someone? Is that all a person's life is worth to these people? Jesus Christ. As disgusting as the death of Huey's girlfriend is, this opening did a fantastic job of getting me to root for Huey immediately. I mean, not only has the guy's girlfriend died, but as I just alluded to, these idiots think that he can be paid off with 45k and they'll just forget about it, and his dad, who is played by Simon Pegg, actually advises him to take the money. So when you see all these assholes acting the way they do to Huey, I mean, you can't help but feel angry in the same way that he is, and I just wanted him to basically kill every hero in the Seven. And that's where London's finest Billy Butcher comes in, as this is another guy who has a hatred of superheroes, or soups as he calls them, and he teams up with Huey in order to get their revenge. If I were to compare Billy with anyone from The Walking Dead, I'd say that he's very much a Negan type of character. He's very 
loud, over the top, likes to make jokes, likes to be the centre of attention, very inappropriate, and he's going to be one of those characters that you either love or you hate, you're either going to think he's hilarious or you're either going to think that he is very irritating. Personally, I thought he was brilliant, I found him incredibly funny, maybe that's because he has the same sort of messed up dark humour that I do, I don't know, and also because personally I don't really care about swearing, I mean, I am British, British people do swear a lot in their everyday lives and I'm used to it so it doesn't really offend me hearing him say the word cunt because I hear it on a daily basis at work it's not gonna offend me but obviously I understand that there may be people out there who don't like you know profanity and his kind of crass humor and if that's the case then this probably this show isn't gonna be for you and weirdly he does actually remind me of some people I know in real life which now I'm thinking about it probably isn't a good thing Anyway, I think it's quite a clever move in having us as viewers follow both Starlight as she joins the Seven and also Huey and Billy as they go on their little revenge mission because we get to see opposing points of views. And as the season progressed, I have to say I did question some of the motivations of the characters. For example, it's made patently clear in the opening episodes that the soups are absolute dickheads and honestly, during the first couple of episodes, I was completely on board with Billy's kill all the soups mantra. However, Starlight is a nice girl and as the season progresses, so does her and Huey's relationship and it caused me to question whether I was actually right in supporting Billy as the season went on because as their relationship develops, you see Billy being a bit of an arsehole towards Huey and being an arsehole towards Starlight and you kind of begin to think, you know what, maybe not all the soups are evil and maybe Billy is a bit too extreme in his thinking and it makes it a bit awkward watching this guy go on his path of revenge because you know it's only going to end up hurting him. I'm sure that the boys probably does like to distance itself from the more traditional superhero stories but this dynamic kind of reminded me a bit of X-Men because in the X-Men series you have some of the humans who hate all the mutants because they think they're too powerful and are a danger and want to get rid of all of them and then you also have some of the mutants who detest all humans because of how they've been treated and some of them even see them as a weaker species and they're both on sort of extreme sides of the spectrum and yeah I kind of got that feeling in this show as well with some people you know Billy hates all soups and then I'm sure there are some soups like Homelander who sort of looks down on people and thinks they're inferior and pathetic and can kill them and do what he likes. So yeah, it did remind me a bit of X-Men, which I don't think is a bad thing because X-Men is quite a mature comic in many ways and, you know, it alludes to sort of real life race problems and that kind of thing. So yeah, the connection to X-Men or my connection that I made to X-Men, I don't think is a bad thing. What I found truly remarkable about the boys come the end of the season is how it does a brilliant job of making me sympathise and empathise with some of the most horrible characters that I've seen. I mean, Homelander is a sociopathic, abusive asshole, and this guy, yeah, he, he plays off that he's like this amazing Superman-esque character and everyone loves him. Oh, it's Homelander and he's just a total piece of shit. He really is. But by the end of the season, I admit... I did kind of feel for him a bit, which, considering some of the horrible stuff he does, is quite amazing, really. I've purposely not said too much about story spoilers in this review, and I'm not going to throughout the rest of it, but there is one moment which stands out to me in particular, which involves Homelander, which kind of illustrates the point that I just made, because it really makes you see how sick and twisted this guy really is. Now the instance that I want to talk about involves Homelander and Maeve who is another member of the Seven going to prevent a hijacking that is taking place on a plane. Now they go on the plane and they kill two of the terrorists who are on the main bit of the plane, I can't remember what it's called, I've only been on a plane once but where everyone sits. Anyway they kill them and then they go into the cockpit and they find there's another terrorist and Homelander lasers him with his eyeballs but in doing so he completely ruins all the flight controls and the plane can no longer fly and that's not good. Now in any kind of traditional superhero story you would just say that well Homelander can fly, why can't he just fly outside, carry the plane home or carry it to land, everyone's saved, happy days. Well. That doesn't happen in the boys. Homelander says that he can't physically do it because he's got nothing to stand on, so there's sort of no friction, I guess, and even if he could, he might not be able to control it. He might just rip the plane in half, so it's not viable, so that option is out the window. So option number two, then, is that Maeve says to Homelander, well, you know, you can fly, so why don't you just fly these people back to shore, pick one of them up at time, come back, fly back, fly back, and he basically again shoots that down and says, look, that's too many trips. 
I can't do that, I can't save all these people, it's not going to work. Now, again, in any other story, superhero story, pardon me, there would probably be an, a third option in which everyone is miraculously saved, but it becomes apparent that that's it. They're out of options, they can't save everyone, so yeah, that's it, game over basically. And what's really messed up is that Homelander doesn't, he never attempts to explain this to the passengers, he never sort of says, look, sorry, I can't save you. He just says, oh yeah, everything's great. And he basically wants to just fly out the back door with Maeve and he says to her, look, come with me, we're leaving. Now, what happens then is all the passengers start panicking. They start saying, hey, you're leaving us. Don't, you know, don't leave us. And they start begging him to take them. And bear in mind that this guy is a guy who they idolize. He's their hero. He's the perfect sort of superhero in this world basically goes mental and says if you come near me if fucking come near me i will laze the shit out of you and kill you and that is like fucking hell can you imagine meeting your hero you think you're gonna be saved and then he's like if you come near me i'll kill you you're gonna die if you come near me i'm gonna kill you so yeah it's dark as shit and it's really messed up and i was just like wow this is this is intense, I can't believe they're doing this. So basically, he kind of forces Maeve to go with him, and at this point, just as they're about to leave, a lady comes along, I think with two young girls, and says, look, come on, you can take these two with you. Yeah, we're all gonna die, but please save these girls. Now, there's no reason why that I can't see that Homelander can't carry a couple of girls to safety. He can do it, but he chooses not to because he says, he can't risk them going back with him and them telling everyone what he's like and that they let everyone die. So basically, Homelander would rather that two young girls die than his reputation be ruined. And that is absolutely diabolical, as Billy Butcher would say. Yeah, that's just messed up in so many ways. And boy, wow, I can't believe that they did that. What a total piece of shit. And then, you know, to make matters worse, he goes on TV after the plane goes down, pretends to cry and says, oh, it's such a shame, this should have never have happened. And then he basically uses that tragedy to push his own political agenda of trying to get superheroes in the army. I mean, I know I've gone into this moment in a lot of detail, so sorry for boring everyone, but for me, this is the standout moment for me of the season that I'm gonna remember, and I'm sure that most other people will, apart from some of the more funnier moments. And I just felt I need to show you how sort of evil Homelander is for you to then understand why I was so shocked at that coming into the season, you kind of sympathise with him a bit. Because to be fair, as a writer, how can you really make a character come back from that and make him be sort of able to be empathised with, but they do do it. As the season progresses, we learn more about Homelander's past, and we see a flashback scene of him as a baby, or a child even, and basically we learn that he was raised in a lab, and he spent most of his time behind glass walls, he had little to no human interaction, absolutely no love, and you kind of understand why he turned out to be a bit of a sociopath. I mean, it doesn't make what he did right, but still, you can kind of understand it a bit more. There's also a scene in which Homelander is having to record some kind of promotional video for the Vault Company, who are this company who manage the Seven, and I think they manage a lot of superheroes in the universe, and he's having to record this show about his home life, and basically, like a lot of what the superheroes do in the show, it's all carefully scripted by the company, they tell them what to do, everything's sort of done to increase uh, their monetary value, and to get more followers and likes, and that kind of stuff, and basically, we have him in this clip of him walking around some home, which is not even his home, it's just a random home filled with stuff, and he basically has to tell this fake story that's written on script about, oh yeah, me and my dad played baseball here, it was really great, you know, I had the, uh, the classic American upbringing. I don't even know what this accent is, but anyway, so yeah, he's basically having to tell a lie on camera about how he was brought up by a loving father and family, just so audiences in America can sort of say, oh look, there's our Homelander, and yeah, you kind of do feel for this guy having to put on this act, sort of pretending he had a happy childhood, when the reality was he was kind of like tortured as a kid. And also, I think one of the production crew or someone puts like this blanket on the bed and he completely freaks out because that is the only thing in the entire house that's real, that's the blanket that we see him have in a flashback when he's a baby in the little like test chamber in the sort of... Um, not prison, the lab, the lab area, and I guess that's the only thing he ever had as a kid, and he sees that, and he's like, why did you put that here, and he goes mad, and you kind of think, wow, yeah, like, that is hard, he's having to pretend here for the cameras that he had this happy upbringing, and this dude's put a reminder of his shitty upbringing on the bed, and that is a bit of a dick move, he might have done it on purpose, but still, yeah, yeah, I kind of feel for him, I mean, he's still vile, like most of the people on this show, but not everyone is just evil, because they are evil, most of them have a shitty upbringing and turn out that way, so yeah, I did kind of empathise with him a bit, and I think that 
is a sign of a good show that you can turn even the most hateful or hateable sorry characters into someone who you can kind of think well actually yeah I kind of get why he or she is like that I do kind of think though that it is a bit strange that all these heroes do these contractual obligations and do all these meetings for the Vault Company. I don't really see why they can't just say, well, no, I'm not reading this script, no, I don't do this advert. I mean, I guess you could say, well, the Vault Company are paying them millions, so they do it. But Homelander's Superman. If he wants to go rob a bank and get money, he can. So there's no reason why he needs to be paid by a company to do it. So I don't know. I mean, maybe this is something that is expanded upon next season. Maybe it's something that's in the comics. I don't know. I haven't read them. We do kind of see him and what's the lady's name? Steelwell, who she's kind of like a... I don't know what her actual role is, a director or something of the Vault Company, but she kind of... It's like she almost has a spell over Homelander. She keeps him and all the other heroes in check. I don't know how she does it. Again, maybe that's something that will be explored in more detail next season but they clearly have a way of manipulating these people to do what they want them to do even though they all have superpowers which again is a bit odd so you do kind of have to suspend your disbelief in that aspect a bit because again you could just say well you know Homelander is arguably the strongest guy on the planet if he doesn't want to do this why is he doing it so there's got to be some reason but again maybe that is explored next season I don't know and I would say just as surprising as the fact that I could empathize with Homelander by the end of the season I also kind of empathise with the Deep. And I don't really like saying that because this is a guy who sexually assaults Starlight in the first episode. But, again, come the end of the season, you kind of think, oh, yeah, this guy, you kind of feel a bit bad, sorry for him. And again, I feel a bit uncomfortable saying that because what he does is, is absolutely disgusting. But, yeah, he does become kind of likeable, which isn't really what you should say about, like, a rapist. But, yeah, he does, so, yeah. After sexually assaulting Starlight, he is separated from the rest of the group, and I think he's tasked out to another state to be their hero, so basically to give him a chance to lie low whilst sort of the heat all goes off because Starlight opened up to the public about her abuse and everyone hates him, and the Seven basically don't want to look bad, so they ship him off. And it's at this time that you kind of realise what a kind of sad and lonely and insecure man he really is. He has these really horrific gills on his stomach and he feels really horrible about the way he looks and he also he says that you know he's the token freak he's basically the fish man everyone else has got these amazing powers and then this is a guy who just jumps underwater and like he says at one point how many underwater crimes are there? There's not a lot he's just there because they want a fish guy who can basically push their water parks or whatever so yeah you kind of feel for him and he is actually sexually assaulted himself when a lady comes to his house or flat wherever it is he's staying and she like fingers his gills in his stomach and it's really painful for him and it's pretty disgusting to watch and he's saying like no stop 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 and she's like oh shut up you freak so and she's abusing him whilst touching his gills which is really uncomfortable whilst also playing with herself yeah that really does happen in the show Ugh. yeah it, it's uncomfortable to watch for many reasons you could say that's what he deserves i don't know but i guess it made him feel as powerless as starlight did when he assaulted her at the start of the season so he might know how it feels now but both are equally as uncomfortable to watch and yeah it's pretty messed up but again you kind of start to feel for him he's also a bit of an alien and the odd one out compared to the rest of the group and compared to the rest of people around him due to his relationship that he has with aquatic life because he can talk to sea creatures and he understands how they feel yet obviously a lot of the world they don't care if a fish dies but this guy does so you kind of feel for him in that sense and it does create some genuinely funny and also sad moments. There's one scene where the deep is in a supermarket and he spots a tank full of lobsters and he sees this lobster and he starts talking to him and he says to the guy behind the counter look I want this guy and he says that because he wants to save him and take him home and you know he's built up a kind of a well as friendship they're only talking for a while but he's built up a rapport with this lobster and he wants to do his bit and save him because he has a relationship with sea creatures. Now, the guy behind the counter obviously doesn't know that, he just thinks he wants to eat him, so he takes him out and immediately chops him in half. And it's hilarious and upsetting at the same time, almost as if, like, you were at your nan's funeral and then her corpse farted in the coffin. Obviously it's sad because your nan's dead, but she did a fart, so it's quite funny. <laughs> just like nan. I don't even know where that came from, I'm so sorry. And also there's a scene in which he is breaking out a dolphin from a water park, which you just need to see it to believe it because it's hilarious. I thought it was brilliant. I've seen some people say that 
this kind of humor is a bit too over the top for them and they didn't really find it funny but it's right up my street i laughed more in this show than i have done for a long time so as well as being this dark and kind of unsettling superhero show the boys is very funny and i kind of would describe the humor as being very british if that even makes any sense because it's very sort of dark and crass and pokes fun at people and especially billy he just his insults and some of the one-liners he comes up with are hilarious. You know, he goes on a little talk about the Spice Girls as some kind of pep talk, which, yeah, made me laugh. And it also, again, there's a flashback explaining why he knows so much about the Spice Girls, which makes it kind of poignant and sad as well. I know what I'm talking about now. It might sound very odd in mentioning some guy talking about the Spice Girls. But trust me, it's funny and it does work. A lot of the humour is also kind of like shock humour, like with the dolphin, and there's also a scene in which a guy is killed when a woman sits on his face and crushes his head yes that does actually happen and again you know this is very much my weird sense of humor take that with a pinch of salt doesn't mean you will find it funny you might think it's disgusting you might not find it funny at all but i'm just going to say that i thought this show was genuinely funny and i was laughing throughout and that's really all i want to say about the boys i mean for a superhero show there isn't a lot of action which is why i haven't really talked about sort of the action scenes i mean what there is there is done very well and there will be a few scenes that you will remember there's one in particular with a baby that I know a lot of people were talking about at the time of release and yeah I don't want to talk about the plot I don't want to talk about too much else about the show I just want to give you an overview because this is more of a recommendation video than my sort of traditional uh, Walking Dead videos where I go into all the plot points and talk about you know what happened in the episode that week this is me just saying this is what the show's about I liked it I think you should give it a go season two has already been greenlit and I think is filming and it's going to be out next year and yeah, I think this show, I saw it pulled like 8 million viewers, I don't know, on Amazon, um, I don't know what time frame that was for, but hopefully if it carries on, then it will go for however long it needs to, to finish the story and you'll see it through from start to end. So yeah, I, I don't think it's one of those shows that you have to worry about it being cancelled anytime in the near future. I think you should watch it, I think. If you're like me, if you're a bit tired of all the superhero stuff and want something different, give it a watch. I think even if you don't like superhero shows or programs or comics or whatever, if you're not interested in any of that, again, don't go into this thinking it's going to be an Avengers type superhero show. You know, I've told you what it's like. If you can deal with the swearing and the violence and that kind of stuff that doesn't bother you, then give it a go. I really liked it and I know there was a lot of hype about it when it came out and I sort of didn't really give in to that. You know me, I'm always late to shows. I like to watch stuff years after they've come out for some reason but yeah i got around to it now very good show so let me know your thoughts below have you watched the boys did you like it is there anything else you want me to watch excuse me um i know you've given me some suggestions already and i know there's shows you've been telling me to watch for years i do apologize uh i've got a bit more time on my hands now so i am going to try and watch more tv and do more of these type of stuff in between watching the walking dead and talking about walking dead because um, yeah, yeah, I kind of wanted to talk about other things as well and I had dabbled in doing that before but now I think I have a bit more time to do it so let me know your thoughts below did you like this video? we want to see more of this kind of stuff uh, did you have a nice Christmas as well? I hope you all did I hope you have a good new year I don't know if this is going to go out before new year or new year, sorry, or after but whatever the case have a good new year and I will see you very soon. And I'm going to go into the house and get into my bed because I am freezing. But take care, everyone. Goodbye. Who am I? I'm fucking Billy Butcher, me old flower. And I'm here to sort out your fucking Scott. Fucking. I went fucking Jon Snow then.